Good evening, Team Kesteva. How's everyone feeling? Really excited today. We have a team member submitted PE example problem. Best part is I'm doing this on the fly. So he provided me answers. Hopefully I can get the right one. Um, if not, boy, I'm gonna put, look pretty silly, but hey, we're all learning out here and we all make mistakes. So I'm ready to accept that challenge and let's get in there. We have a cantilevered member with two point loads along that cantilever and they give us the cross section as I've shown here in section AA. It is a, uh, well, rectangular kind of square box, four and a half inches deep, five and a half inches wide, and a modulus of elasticity of 1.5 times 10 to the 6 PSI. And the question is, what is the max tip deflection? Our team member, what's your name? Um, what is your name? Narathip gave us four solutions. And as I said, he's looking for tip deflection. So if we go green here, under this loading, that cantilever uh, member is gonna see some type of deflection like this. And the kicker is he wants to know what is total deflection at the tip, so at the free end of this member. Where do all you think I'm gonna go? We got those shear and moment charts within this and so many different scenarios you should be utilizing. And we are gonna flip over to page three 220. And as you will see at the very top, we have a condition called cantilevered beam with a concentrated load at any point. Boy, that sounds a lot like this example. The only caveat, and you might be sweating a little bit if you're newer to this, is that, hey, Rich, there's two point loads on this beam. So that's not, the, that's not indicative to the example that's in the book. What you can do with deflection is you can just treat each load in its own condition. And then you just add the two deflections that you calculated together and that is then the sum of your total deflection at the end all right let's get the area of our cross section which is just 4.5 times 5.5 inches and that equals 24.75 inches squared and then we also want i for our cross section which is b d cubed over 12. if you don't know that by heart again oh this thing, it's got all the answers. You flip to the back. I have tabbed it as section properties. This is in table 17-27, and it gives you geometric equations based on the geometry of your cross section. That's where you can find the equation for I for a rectangle. B is here, D is right there. Plug all that in, that gets us 41.76 inches to the fourth. We're gonna split both load conditions into two separate beam examples and then add the deflections together at the end. This is gonna be condition one, for the 150 pounds, and condition two is gonna be the 100 pounds. We wanna know max deflection at the tip for case one. And we know that case one is this example. Boom. Per the ACI manual, max tip deflection one, we'll call it, is equal to 150, because that's P, times 72, because that's inches. So we wanna make sure that we convert everything to inches because our modulus of elasticity is gonna be PSI. So that's pounds per square inch. All right, keep everything grooving here with the units. Divided by six times E, which is 1.5 times 10 to the sixth, times I. And you have the other part of the equation, which is three times 84. So this is the full length of your cantilevered member, minus 72, which is the location of that load. So again, 72, I'll highlight it, 72 here and 72 here, that comes from that distance, okay? Which is six feet, six times 12 to get it into inches is 72 inches. I have a mission for all the team members today. I think we can double this team by end of August. Let's be real, there ain't that many of us. So if you have someone that's teetering or that's curious, get them to commit, get them on this team, all right? That all spits out to a total deflection of 0 0.3724 inches at the end, end being the free end, the tip, all right? Now, I'll go blue. Our next scenario, which is two, is the following. So now our max deflection is the same equation, we'll call it delta max two is equal, again, same equation, except now P is 100 pounds. The distance is only 60 inches squared over six times E times I, three 
times 84, because 84 is still the full length of the cantilever, minus 60 inches again. And again, we go highlight this distance, is this number here and this number here. That gets us a total deflection of 0.184 inches at end. We take, I'll go black, the summation of both of those, so summation, deflection at end, equals both those added together, which is 0 0.556 inches. I call that my final answer. Don't go anywhere, let's go figure it out. Jesus, obey the YouTube algorithm. Stick around, all right? This is the fun part. Let's go green, because we go green for good. And I would say B, in this case, 0 0.55 inches would be our solution. Are you sure about that? That's it for today, team. Short, sweet, but it was a member requested problem, which is, mm, I love those. That means the team is engaging, asking questions, and that is the best thing you can do as a younger engineer as you come into the trade. Ask. It's the only way you're gonna learn, and that's the only way you are going to get engaged with what you're doing. And then ultimately, that's the only way you're gonna get better. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff for YouTube, and do you think we could hit 5K team members by the end of August? Let me know. This is Rich with Kestva, and I'll see everybody next time. Later.